Hey friends, Evangelist Rob here. I want to prophetically decree and declare we are in a new and better covenant. The old covenant was obsolete or fading away. That's why Jesus had a came, had a come, excuse me, and fulfill what the old covenant couldn't produce. What the old covenant could not produce, Christ came to fulfill in the new now. We hear the word grace a lot in Christian doing grace, 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 grace here, grace there, grace everywhere. Grace is not a message. It's a person. His name is Jesus Christ. Now, I took that from Brother Joseph Prince, and he does preach on grace a lot. Now, grace without truth is chaos. Truth without grace is the law. Okay, so let me say it again. Grace without truth is chaos. Truth without grace is the law. So it's either all grace or it's some mixture, and it really is all grace. But let me just say this. It is all grace, but justification, righteousness, is different than consecration and sanctification. So I don't want to confuse this because consecration or sanctification is the process of being made holy or separating yourself unto holiness. Now, just because you're under grace doesn't mean you can live like the devil and think you're going to be blessed of God. It still might mean that, you know, the Lord in his mercy allows things, but you are going to open the door in the avenue and add warfare onto your life and open the door to demons or devils. And you, if you keep doing it and establish iniquity and strongholds that get in your mind, you will definitely need deliverance. Now, you know, there are mysteries in the Bible. There are certain mysteries, and I don't want to get into them because there's sides on both sides of the coin. Once saved, always saved. I've got my own convictions. I'm not going to come on here and say you can live like the devil and say you're born again and you love Jesus and you're going to go to heaven when you die. But then again, I'm not going to say you can, earn, you can earn heaven because you can't because salvation's a gift and a gift's only a gift unless it's free. Listen, I could sit here for hours and flip both sides of the coin. I think about these things. I turn it. I meditate it. Let me train you and teach on the New Covenant some scripture if you give me a moment. I am live every Monday, 9 p.m. New York prophesying and preaching and praying the hour of power. It'd be an honor if you'd subscribe to the channel. Let's get into Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant. The old covenant, again, it means no longer of general use. It's out of date, which was established on better promises. For if that first covenant would have been faultless, then there would be no place for a second. Hebrews 8.13. In that, he says, a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Hebrews 12:24 to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better than that of Abel Abel Hebrews 12:13:20 Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant Hallelujah. It's the new covenant. Jesus at the last supper said, this is my blood. This is my body, which is shed for you for the new covenant. Because Christ, what he did on the cross, established a new covenant. Therefore, it is finished. We can now enter into what he has done. And I want you to listen to me. He's done the hard part. We enter into it by grace, by rest. Hallelujah. So it's, it is tricky. I understand grace. It is mysterious. And I want to say again, Paul said, shall we continue to sin so grace may abound? He said, of course not. Now, one John, I believe, says is that if any man claims he's to be without sin, he makes God out to be a liar. Is there anyone that still does? 
come on, let's stop the nonsense around here. Can we stop this? If you could all bat a thousand, what would be the reason for grace in the first place? It's the grace of God that enables us and gives us the strength to serve the Lord and overcome sin, overcome propensities, weaknesses, failure, especially sin. How do you obtain holiness and purity? By the grace of God. You can't do it in your own strength. It's out of relationship. If you could, then you wouldn't need the Lord, and the Lord would have never had to die on the cross in the first place, so grace could come and the new covenant could be established. Hallelujah. We could sit here for hours and talk about this. It's not easy. It's difficult. I understand. To understand, you got to keep pressing in and keep your mind in the new covenant. Father, we thank you for the blood that speaks better than that of Abel. I'm pleading the blood of the new covenant on anyone listening where we never plead guilty. We never plead innocent. Always plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Hey, the Lord bless you. It'd be an honor if you could subscribe to the channel. Again, I'm live every Monday, 9 p.m. The Lord bless you guys. Amen.